Headphones on, everybody, broadcasting live from the apocalypse, coming to you from our secluded bunker on the west bank of the Halifax River. This is the COVID Castle. I'm your pandemic professor, Scott Velasco, and today we're going to get into the dirty business of effects and talking about effects in the year 2020. You know that we're probably talking about DSP. We're talking about your plugins. Some of you who already work in your DAW know where I'm coming from on this. And we're going to divide these effects into four categories. We're going to talk first about spectrum effects. That's today's topic. Spectrum effects deal with the frequency spectrum. So when we say frequency spectrum, you recall a human with exceptional hearing might hear between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz, right? We're going to be adjusting bands within that frequency spectrum. And in order to do this, let's jump over to Pro Tools. So here we are in Pro Tools, and I have isolated in this session a theme song that I made last week when we did a video on automation. So if you caught that, you might remember, it sounds a little something like this. Yeah. You remember that all right. So what we've got here is kind of a dance track, right? And we're going to use this dance track to demonstrate the first subcategory of spectrum effects. And I'm talking about filters. Filters, 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 filters. And filters come in four main groups, high pass, low pass, band pass, and notch. And the very first filter we can talk about is the low pass filter. So back in Pro Tools, I had this track here and it was called riser in my Pro Tools session. So EDM people, you've used risers before. This one sounds like this. Now, To be honest, by itself, that's not much to talk about, right? But what it does, a riser builds excitement. So I wanted to show you how I created that and how it can be used to demonstrate filters and specifically the low pass filter. Let me show you where it starts. I created a noise generator and this noise generator by itself sounds like this. Now, that's kind of an ugly sound. I think we could all agree on that. But the thing about that sound is that it contains really all the frequency in human hearing from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And it's sort of being randomly generated so that it averages out to an even level. And what I did was I took a low pass filter and I want to show you the filter that I used. So we're going to open it up here. We'll get a nice screen detail of this. This is just a filter that comes free with Pro Tools. And right now, my filter cutoff is set to 20 kilohertz, you see. So it's not really getting rid of anything. But as I turn this knob and move that filter point lower, what happens is I'm cutting out some of those high frequencies. The lower it goes, the more of those high frequencies I cut out. Let me show you what it sounds like. until we get all the way down to that 20 hertz range where there's nothing really left for us to hear, right? What we're gonna do though, and this is where it gets fun, is that during the track, we're going to sweep up. We're gonna take that low pass filter and move that frequency point back up to allow some of those higher frequencies to come through and we're gonna record it. Let's do that. Yeah. Oh, you heard that, didn't you? So here's what it sounds like by itself.
And in order to make that even more interesting, I'm going to do it again because I am not a perfect machine, which means I'm going to sweep at a slightly different pace the second time I do it. I'm going to actually create a whole new track. We're going to call this Riser 2. And we will put this one in record. And we're going to do it again. Here we go. Right? You heard some of that. So, what I can do in Pro Tools is I can take just these two tracks and let's make those nice and big so that you can see what I'm doing. Mm hmm. Riser 1 and Riser 2. I'm going to put Riser 1 all the way to the left and Riser 2 all the way to the right. Listen to this by itself for a second. Ooh, that creates a nice wide sound, and then all I have to do is figure out where to cut it off. And I think I'll cut it off right here. Mm, right here. Let's put it in the track. Ooh. Yeah, so you know, when people demonstrate filter effects, very often they use white noise as the example because it contains all the frequencies, but it can be rather boring or sometimes irritating to listen to. Put it in a context like this where you actually have a purpose and it becomes kind of interesting. That's a low pass filter. Now, where would I use this beyond dance music, beyond creating risers? Well, I'll use a low-pass filter if I want to get rid of, let's say a track has noise, kind of hiss, high-frequency noise. High-frequency noise is generally regarded as a problem. Back when we recorded on tape, we had tape hiss to contend with. A low-pass filter allows us to roll off only those top frequencies where the hiss exists and let everything else through. But remember, when we're dealing with upper frequency content, we're dealing with airiness and harmonics and getting rid of too much of that or getting rid of it in the wrong tracks can make things feel really closed off and claustrophobic. So be careful with that. So there you have it. There is our lesson on the low pass filter. Please go ahead and click the tag where we move on and talk about part two, the high pass filter and where that can be used. We're going to listen to a whole different track. It should be interesting. Until then, it's time to bounce. I'm Scott Velasco, fading out. Listen here, Velasco. You ain't no beat cop. You and I both know that.